Hey, I'm Randy and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment, speakers, DACs, amps, turntables, power conditioners, cables, should cost as much as building a very nice treehouse for your children that maybe has a rope that they can go down and have fun and a wooden ladder and it's all sanded and painted and maybe some shutters that they can play in and glean a whole bunch of joy from. And then you can watch them and take pictures and, and record their joy in a lifelong memory. Audio equipment shouldn't cost more than that. And these don't. What are they? They're the JBL. Hold on, I can't find R2D2's handle. They're the JBL Stage A130. Earned $79.99 currently on the Amazon. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the JBL Stage A130. All right, specs and all that good stuff. One inch aluminum tweeter with an HDI, high definition imaging uh, waveguide technology. Okay, that's from them. I didn't make that up. Uh, for detailed sound across a, a, a wide listening area. All right, also a five and a quarter inch poly, polycellulose, hold on. Yep, woofer for punching mid bass. Okay, rated down to 55 hertz up to 40,000 hertz. Ooh, that's some good, yeah, it's, the air's thin up there. <laughs> uh, sensitivity is 86 dB, impedance, six ohms. All right, I drove these with the Vista Audio Spark, 20 watts per channel, and also the T Emotiva TA100 acting as a preamp into the A300, which is like a, a ginormous amount of power. I think it's like a 190 watts into eight ohms. Okay, and then for sources, I use the Orchard Audio Pecan Pie and then the Blue Sound Node 2i. All right, so let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Soundstage and imaging, um, fantastic. Uh, laterally, they soundstage really well. I didn't notice a whole heck of a lot of like vertical imaging but laterally, they soundstage well, and they image very, very well without like having a whole bunch of, I gotta talk it into sounding good. Wherever I may roam, Metallica, 14 second mark, though, came way, way right. More human than human, white zombie. At the beginning, the little electronic noises, and then goes, and then like scares you very well so it starts in the middle and then it just kind of ping pongs back and forth chocolate chip trip oh my goodness hmm huh? you want to test out imaging and soundstage of your speakers put on chocolate chip trip by tool and sit back and enjoy an awesome experience if your speakers soundstage and image well it was all over the place i uh tested these for soundstage and imaging and a more traditional, closer to the wall setup, about 16 inches from the wall. And then I pulled them out about three feet into the room and actually brought them down a little bit below ear level. And they disappeared. And that is the first time, I guess, that I have had a speaker disappear that easily. So three feet, just slightly below ear level. And it was just audio nirvana. Stuff going on everywhere. Audio immersion. Nirvana. All right. Let's talk about build quality and stuff like that. All right. I think build quality on these are great at the price point. Okay. Their um, finish is very similar to the Sony SSCS5s, where it's kind of a very hard vinyl wrap. But the good thing is, I don't see any edges. All right. So I don't think this is going to have a tendency to come up at the edges like some other speakers. Calf Q350, Elac Debut B6, Elac Debut B5.2 and 6.2. 
as well as some other speakers. All right. I actually really like this finish simply because I think it's over the long haul. It's going to be great. And I don't really care what a speaker looks like, but this, uh, it's kind of a rough, it's not trying to be wood or anything. So it looks good. I think it looks good. Oh, it's not as good looking as the, as a Klipsch R51M, but the finish is way better. Okay. So here's something that we need to consider the cabinet size. The cabinet size on the JBL is 937 cubic inches. All right. The Klipsch R51M is 783 cubic, cubic inches. Okay. Same woofer size. All right. So we have 937 JBL 783 Klipsch. The Sony SSCS5 is 803 or 803 cubic inches. Okay. So out of those speakers, the JBLs have the largest enclosure. What does that mean? Normally it has to do with bass extension. Okay. Normally it has to uh, do with where the low frequency is tuned. Okay. Bigger's not always better, but in this case it is. All right. Let's talk about bass. All right. Based on this speaker is pretty typical of a speaker in this price range with some exceptions. This has better punch than the Klipsch R51M, which incidentally is a lot more expensive or the Sony SSC S5 less punch than the Yamo S803. All right. So it kind of falls in between the Yamo and the Sony and the Klipsch. Okay. And the Klipsch would be last as far as bass punts. However, bass roll off, which means how far down does the speaker actually play? And if a, a speaker can have punch, but then can just drop off and then the, the, you don't hear anything in the lower frequencies. This speaker has, I think a good balance of a bit of punch and then a very nice smooth roll off. Okay. Tone is great. So what miles Davis kind of blue record, the upright bass sounded very good sounded convincing the nuances of the vibration doom, and just sounded better than a lot of speakers with the exception of maybe this uh, it probably about the same as the sony ssc s5 dumb nirvana unplugged record again do 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 that mm, you, you could feel and visualize the the vision of that string being plucked. Okay. Highway to hell, ACDC. So here's what I use to test if a speaker is kind of neutral on the bass, because if a speaker is really bumped on the bass, you're going to hear a, a really thick bass drum. Uh, but on a neutral speaker, it's very light. Actually that the bass drum on that song is very light. These came in just North of light. Or maybe just south of light, just south of light, just a titch brought up on the bass, but not enough that it's just like, oh, you know, crazy. So bass, excellent. All right. Uh, the it's a great balance between tone and presence. OK. All right. I printed off notes today because I'm fancy. Hey, let's talk about mid range. All right, one of my go-to songs for mid range is shoot to thrill. The reason that I use that song is because it should come in it has a lot to do with where the crossover is placed too, but that song could, should come in because it, that song uses the bottom half of the tweeter and the upper half of the woofer. If it's done very well, it'll come in and it will be um, detailed, but yet um, meaty at the same time. So it'll have body. These did a great job. They lean towards the meatier part of that, which tells me that the crossover is probably higher up, utilizing more of the woofer. But it was great. Okay. It still maintained enough clarity to be satisfying uh, while maintaining a lot of body. Mid range is very thick and present without being like overtly bubbly. People say bloomy. I'm going to say bubbly. Pet by Perfect Circle. <laughs> my, sorry, my voice is cracking. All right. 
the guitars are visceral mm, very good heavy punchy palpable great mid-range great for electric guitars stuff like metallica uh, perfect circle but let's uh let's soften it up a bit alanis morissette uninvited her voice was hmm had a lot of body while still maintaining nice uh detail not as detailed as the b1 plus by emotiva okay but pretty much no speaker is as detailed as the b1 plus okay rooster alice in chains the harmonies between jerry Cantrell, cantrell jerry jerry and lane uh fantastic fantastic uh again body but yet detail acoustic guitars were great if leaning slightly to the mm, meteor okay not completely neutral but it's not to the point where i'd rather have a speaker be a little bit meteor in the mid-range than anemic in the mid-range okay these are a little bit meteor by just a ever so titch slight all right let's talk about treble King of Pain by Linus Morissette was detailed yet not sibilant, okay? Which surprised me because this is a uh, aluminum dome tweeter. Not to say aluminum dome tweeters can't be good. Quite frankly, this one's awesome, okay? That song can have a tendency to be sibilant uh, if the frequency responses of the treble are kind of bumped all over the place, all right? Hi-hat on Sinner Man, perfect detail yet also maintaining some mm, the ever so just an ever present weight to it so it didn't sound fake it didn't sound like white noise it was just tick, 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 tick. it was like you could hear the stick hit you could hear the treble it sounded like it was in the room very very convincing all right uh the only the only uh, treble that I've heard better than this, but awful, awful similar, was uh, the SVS Primes. It reminded me of the SVS Primes, and that's a $500 speaker. All right. What are my final thoughts? All right. I have a lot of final thoughts. All right. So I'm going to go down the list. The speaker has the ability to disappear probably easier than any other speaker really probably the first experience i've had with any speaker at this price range at 180 dollars i had them i wasn't even trying to make them disappear i just had them out on my stands and i was listening uh the other day and they're just gone they were gone the um the vocalist seemed like she was in line, like Lance Morissette. She seemed like she was in line, if not just a titch forward of the speakers, and the band was back behind, and things went well well behind the, the back wall. Okay. Uh, better imaging and soundstage than a Sony SSCS5. Those speakers sound somewhat, these speakers sound somewhat similar to the Sony SSCS5s, but they have better bass presence, okay? They have similar bass tonality, all right? And uh, they image and soundstage a lot better. Mm. More refined sound than the Yamo S803. The Yamo S803 is... Uh, it's a very fun speaker. And if people are just getting into the hobby, that's a great speaker to get. Okay? This is a more mature version in every way than the Yamo S03. All right. We already talked about that. Uh, similar in sound to the SSCS5, but better bass at lower volume. Uh, I think the only other speaker that competes with this speaker in the price range is the ELAC WB 5.2 when it's on sale at $199. But it hasn't been on sale at $199, okay? That's the only speaker I think that could compete with this one. Has enough personality to not be boring, okay? But the integration of this aluminum dome tweeter was done very well. Or whatever tweeter they used was is great because it's not fatiguing. If anything, it maintains that detail. The highs are not rolled off at all, but I would say they're very neutral. Very, very neutral. Uh, this is a great all-around speaker, and it leans slightly to 
towards uh, audiophile-ish with a very nice flatter mid-range, okay, but still has a lot of detail. Uh, actually, I prefer this speaker over the Studio 530, which is a much more expensive speaker. I think this has better mids, or fuller mids at least. I felt like the 530 was a little bit mm, too much on top, okay? This is a fun enough speaker, and it won't alienate people just coming into the hobby, but it's going to satisfy the more demanding audiophile folks that have maybe more experience and kind of kind of pick up, oh, hey, that mid-range is recessed or that's bright or whatever it is, all right? This is a kind of a Goldilocks speaker, all right? Great for people coming into the hobby, still fun, but also audiophile enough to, you know, be judged by the audio files reminds me of the svs prime and that's a 500 dollars speaker okay couldn't recommend this more at 180 dollars i think it is a complete speaker under 200 dollars. and again the only other speaker that i think can compete with this is the elac debut v 5.2 okay so we're going to start something different. I've noticed some other channels, they kind of get somebody else's take on the speaker after they're done with the review. So uh, today I'm bringing in a uh, female Black Panther uh, to get her take on, on the speaker. Uh, female Black Panther, what did you think of the uh, JBL stage uh, A130s? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if they can make the woofer in a different color. I don't. They probably could. They probably have an awful lot of these. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they're available in Wakanda. We can check though. I don't know what kind of distribution they have down there. Okay. Good. All right. So female Black Panther liked it. Wish the woofer was a little bit different color. Okay, so if you want to support the channel, we have patreon.com slash cheap audio, man. We do Zooms, Zoom meetings on Sunday where we all get together and chit chat. They're a lot of fun. We also do uh, regular Zooms with people to get together and chit chat, talk and on one on one. Uh, we have any of the affiliate links in there are affiliate links. And if you click on them and buy something, I get a small commission. You can also sign up for Amazon HD Music for free. Click on the link in the description. Scroll to the bottom. Click Try HD. You get three months for free, and I get $2, okay? So if you're interested in subscribing because you like what we're doing here, please subscribe. Don't feel compelled. I'm not going to tell you slam the subscribe button and hit the bell notification if you want to great if you don't i get it all right it's your deal subscribe if you want to don't subscribe i would like it if you like the video if you like the video so anyway don't binge watch netflix binge listen to your favorite music and fill your soul with happiness and with that i'm randy i'm the cheap audio man